cough. Let's see, I don't see my name up here where I'm supposed to stand. Patrick. Oh, well. Ashley. Maybe Ashley's supposed to be up here. Daniel 12. Okay, Daniel 12 and uh, Nahum. A little uh, book a few after here. After Daniel, you got Daniel. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, chapter 2. Okay, Daniel 12. Okay, Daniel is the Old Testament parallel of Revelation. It's a prophetic book. It aims uh, about some things in the future, even from our perspective, not just Daniel's. Verse 1, it says, At that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth for the children of the people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. At that time thy people shall be delivered, Everyone that shall be found written in the book, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. And many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Okay, now the Nahum passage. Uh, many of the prophets, they'd write about things in the future, but they'd use uh, the words that they knew because they didn't know what a you know a big uh, jet was like, called. They didn't know what a tank was called. And so they used the terms that they knew to try to explain something which they didn't know. Nahum chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, describes a modern mechanized cavalry. Okay, it's like any of the uh, military weaponry that we have in this country. And that's what it's describing. Nahum chapter 2, verse 1. He that dasheth in pieces has come up before thy face. Keep the munition. Munition, we'd say ammunition. Keep the powder dry, as they say. He that dashes in pieces a prophecy of the Antichrist and so then he says, keep the powder dry, watch the way, make thy loins strong, fortify thy power mightily. For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel, for the emptiers have emptied them out and marred their vine branches. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation, and the fir trees shall be terribly shaken. Whatever their chariots are, they're heavy enough to shake trees. This is how they describe the engine of cars and trucks, and it's by horsepower. That's where this comes from. Verse 4, the chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like lightnings. There's your uh, rush hour. So he's uh, describing something that's about oh, 2,700 years in the future, about some modern mechanisms. And he's comparing this to uh, the Great Tribulation. Verse 2, that's what this is dealing with. And so it's some dealing with some things that you and I are actually witnessing and seeing. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I do pray you'd help us, uh, help me to get this truth across, this idea, help me to go through this, uh, that uh, might uh, help us consider what's going on in these days and help us not to uh, lose faith in thy uh, blessed words. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, if you would go back to Daniel 12, we'll just run it real quick. Uh, this is obviously going to be a sweet, kind, loving Christmas message. Uh, but we are going to take a trip into uh, hillbilly mountains of Tennessee and uh, experience a story of when uh, Grandpa, an aged man, receives a gift for Christmas. 
Okay, Daniel chapter 12. Uh, Michael, the archangel, one of only two angels named in the Bible. Michael is always beating somebody up or fighting somebody. He's a strong angel. Gabriel, the one who has the gift of gab, is always giving somebody a message. Each of them show up three times in the Bible. Uh, Michael is showing up, Daniel 12. You'll see in verse 1 it's called the time of trouble. That's in the Bible known as Jacob's trouble. That's known to be the tribulation. The tribulation uh, time period is also called the end. You'll see that in verse 4. O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. In case you've ever had a Pentecostal ask, tell you that he's, he's enduring to the end to be saved. That's Matthew 24, 13. You read Matthew 24, 15. You'll see the abomination of desolation. Matthew 24, 21. You'll see the great tribulation. The end. You'll find that through Hebrews chapter 3, chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 10. The end. That's the end of the tribulation time period. Doctrinally, Daniel 12 is writing about the great tribulation. That's what Nahum was writing about when the excellency of Jacob is turned backwards, where the Jews will be praying to God for help and deliverance and their prayers will be hitting like a concrete ceiling. He's not going to listen to them. Why? Because many years ago they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. Well, in Daniel 12, verse 4, there's an interesting statement at the end. It says, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. The thing that has amazingly increased in my lifetime, let alone some of you folks who got 20 years on me, is transportation and communication. Those two things have amazingly increased in our lifetime. Transportation and communication. I mean, you can get on a plane and fly around the world 24 hours. I mean, now uh, when they have military campaigns, people in America know what's going to happen before it happens a lot of times. Why? Transportation, communication. It's amazing. In this verse, it says, many shall run to and fro. It doesn't say who the many are. And if you look up that to and fro in the Bible, you'll find in Job 1 and Job 2, where it mentions Satan goes to and fro through the earth. But in 2 Chronicles 16.9, you'll find that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro through the earth, and he's looking to show himself strong on the behalf of those who have a perfect heart towards him. But in our day and age, Ephesians chapter 4 mentions Christians, children Christians, who are being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And if that isn't a comment about churches today, I don't know what is. Where they are so unsettled in their belief, they are so unsure of the Bible and what they're supposed to believe, they will run from this false doctrine to this one, to this one, to this one. But the idea here is that, amazingly, transportation communication in our lifetime, in my lifetime, is just phenomenal. I remember as a kid a party line telephone. Some of you remember that where it rang twice, you know, for us, once for somebody else, and then if you pick it up, and then if you sit and listen to the other party, you say, hang up the phone, you know. So I remember when we got our own private line. I remember those. I remember watching Lassie on TV, and Jimmy would have to call the sheriff, and he would crank the phone. <laughs> Amen. I remember those. Now, we didn't have a, we had them dial ones. You know, we still have our dial phone at Rensselaer Church, and one of the girls went in there trying to work. How does this thing work? <laughs> uh, the thing I hate always about the dial phones, you dial them ten numbers, you know, and then you get a busy signal, and you got to do it all again. You can't hit the redial. Uh, but it's amazing. So now I remember when it got the touch tone. Oh, man, I just play, beep, 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 beep. I just loved hearing the sounds, the touch tone. Then it went to unlimited long distance. No more have to be Dutchy. You know, I, I got five seconds to talk to her <laughs> like that, you know. Then it went to unlimited long distance. Now you got these cell phones. Everywhere you go, these people got these cell phones. Amish can't have a phone in their house, but they got a cell phone. You go to the poorest section of this world. You go down to Panama. They got poor people, and they they're getting paid a dollar twenty-five an hour, but they got a cell phone. And these cell phones are unlimited. 
It's just phenomenal. And you, everywhere you go, you got these people yakking, yakking on these cell phones. Talk, 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 talk. People are slow, slaves to phones. You know, I can't stand it when I go to an auto parts store. I'm in front of the guy. I'm ready to buy a product. And somebody calls him and he interrupts the sale with me to answer the phone. They cut line. Get in line, pal. You know, when I call those places often, I will say to the guy, do you have a customer in front of me? If you do, put me on hold and I'll wait. All the guy's doing is he's doing what I'm doing when I call around. I'm trying to get the cheapest deal. Most of the time I'm not going to the guy anyway. But still, the idea, people are slaves to phones. You get behind a guy tra- traveling down the road, going to poke his cabin, and you pass, you see the idiots on the phone. You know, you want to run them off the road. People are slaves to phone. Sometimes you even see them playing with them in church, playing with them in school, you know, playing with these stupid phones. We're slaves to these phones. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, talks about words, 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 words. Proverbs 10, verse 19, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Proverbs 17, I like this verse, verse 27, 28. It says, He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. You see, I'd rather sit there and look dumb than open my mouth and prove it. You know, but the idea is Americans are just talk, 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 you know, back and forth, talk, 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 talk. And they're just running, they got diary of the mouth. And these cell phones, a lot of times, what you know, just encouraging this stuff. Now, I got a cell phone, but mainly well, I use this thing is strictly for emergency reasons or, or convenience to travel down the road. They are very handy, very handy when you go to an airport. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a cell phone. I'm just saying people are slaves to these things. Now, wouldn't this be a handy way for the Antichrist to get his message across and control people? Whip that baby up, and it's got GPS, and it can follow you anywhere you go. Right there. Antichrist gets his message across, and that thing automatically comes on, and there you got it, right there. Oh, uh, did I say Obama? No, I didn't mean Obama. I mean, right there. What a way to control people hooked into these things. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 3, it says, A fool is known by a multitude of words. A fool is known by a multitude of words. A dream cometh through the multitude of business. Work, work, work. Now, I'm not John Wesley. I don't have John Wesley's rule, but I do kind of like the idea of it. But he would not talk to anybody more than 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, he'd shut the conversation down and leave. Why? Because he felt after 15 minutes, he's going to get into nothing but foolish talk. Now, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that, but, you know, I'm not one. I just, I, I am terrible on phone etiquette, calling on the phone, talking to people. I like to get it done and over with. Besides, can you imagine the microwaves that hitting your ears with those things? You know, frying the brain. I don't know about that thing, but, you know, you know, I imagine a story down in Tennessee, he'll be a preacher. He's been preaching for 40 years, 50 years. He's had five or six kids. You know, a couple of the kids moved down to Nashville, Tennessee. They went to the big city. And uh, mom's ailing in years. And so here they have a Christmas. Our daughter comes with her kids and her husband. You know, the brothers and sisters, they come. And, and they give Grandpa this little gift. It's about that, about that wide, you know, long, but, you know, that wide, about that tall. He'd been praying for a little Gideon Bible because he'd been traveling through those mountains Wore out his little Gideon Bible. You know, it's better to carry that than his big Bibles. And so he kind of warned. He'd been praying for a Gideon Bible. He saw that little package about like that, about like that, about like that. Oh, God's answered my prayers. He opened that thing up, and what, what does he get? He gets one of these things. He looks at that thing. Looks at his wife. Says, look at here. The smallest ad machine I've ever seen in my life. It's got all these numbers on here. Man, I could... I could probably use that thing, you know. I could probably count all the pennies and dimes, we, things we get out of the offering. I'd keep track of that. I don't know. 
I could probably help Uncle Jake keep track of his earthworm farming business with this. You know, I could probably help Sister Bertha. You know, she got on a diet. She's trying to get down to 350. I could probably help count her calories on this thing. The old cousin Jim Bob, he needs help with his aluminum can recycling business, you know, but I wouldn't need to count this the teeth of your sisters. I can do that on two hands anyway, you know, how that goes. You know, I'm kind of jealous, you know, that Kentucky guy invented that toothbrush. I knew it had to be a guy from Kentucky because if there's any place else, it would have been teeth brushed, you know, but anybody knows that, you know, and figured that thing out. He's looking at that uh, ad machine, and the daughter says, well, Daddy, that, that does have a calculator, but that's a cell phone. That's a what? That's a cell phone. That's like a portable phone. He looked over at the wall and he saw that old dial phone right over there. He remembered when they brought in the wires up the mountain and put that phone right there. He looked at this and he said, where's the cord? Where's the wire? Now, I hope you don't got a long wire, but this old Joe, he likes to chew on them wires. That old dog we got out back, he likes chewing on them wires. And I, where's the wire? She said, no, Daddy, that's a cell phone. Let me show you how that works. She called a number, and he heard a noise, and he looked over at one of his grandkids, and they whipped a cell phone out of their pocket. They got talking. He said, that's a walkie-talkie, that's what that is. He said, where's the antenna on that thing? No, Daddy, it's, not, it's a cell phone. You can talk to him on that thing. Oh, I don't know if I believe that. So she said, watch this. She called another number, and there's the other child over there. She picks, you know, thumbs ringing out of her pocket, pulls it. He said, man, that's the neatest walkie-talkie I've ever seen in my life. If I go back to the old barn, and if they go up to the outhouse, you think we can hear each other in that thing? Why, sure, you can hear each other. You can hear anybody around the world in that thing. Oh, Shaw, you can't hear that. No wires, no cord, no antenna. You're joshing me. You know, and he's thinking about that, and they're trying to convince him. He said, no, Daddy, that's a cell phone. That thing, you could send text messages. You can take pictures with it. You could even take a short video with this thing. You can get directions on the Internet. You can play games. And it's even got a calculator. He looked at him. He said, now, nah, I know that's an ad machine. I know what an ad machine. It's got numbers on there. That's an ad. Now, nah, I know I kid you. I kid you kids a lot of times. You know, I know I played a lot of pranks on you kids when I was growing up. Now, nah, you ain't going to get me on this one. And he thought they was goofing off. He said, you know, I was kind of hoping for a New Testament, but psh, thanks anyway, you know, for that thing. Nice ad machine. But, and then the one said, no, watch this, watch this. So she took it, and she stood back, and she took a picture of the cut child. He said, look at this, look at this. So I got a picture. So said, well, what's a camera got numbers on there for? I mean, he just was so surprised. And you know what? I forgot to tell you, Daddy, that's got GPS on there. He said, what's that? GPS. Well, that's global positioning system. That's a satellite-based navigation system. Of course, he's scratching his head. It's got a network of 24 satellites. You know, the military, was, you were really using it for the military, but now they're letting civilians use that. Basically, they can tell where you're at anywhere you go. He said, I don't know about that. He said, you know, I, I just, I'm not sure about that. You know, you're trying to fool an old man. I know I was born in a barn. You know, I was born in that shack out back, but, you know, I wasn't born yesterday. No, 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 Daddy, let me show you how this thing works. So they pushed a series of numbers, and they called a friend of the girl, and she said, oh, don't you remember uh, the girl I grew up with in school, you know, and uh, Greta Sue Ann, don't you remember her? Here, now you talk to her on the phone. So she, the girl's talking to her on the phone, and he said, I ain't going to listen to that thing. And, and he, he thought she was just fooling him, and he just started laughing about that. And so it went on and on and on. And she said, now tell me, tell me, you tell me, how is that supposed to work? Well, she says, now when you talk into this thing, those words goes into this thing, and then it sends us out to this tower. There's a cell tower. Did you see that cell tower down there? Down there by, uh, by the mill up there? I mean, there's a tower over there. He said, I thought that was a windmill. No, there's a tower over there. And them words go from here to that tower, and then it goes to this tower to this tower, and it goes from this tower to this tower, and then it gets right down to this tower, and then it goes from the tower to the people that you call. He said, oh, Sean, I don't believe 
something like that. You mean to tell me those words go from here and they go over here and they and they don't get you only got one phone at a time in them towers? No, all sorts and those words never get mixed up. You think about that. You know the words that's floating through the air right now? Television waves, radio waves, shortwave, CV, ham radio, cell phones. This microphone is going through the air. All these words, and they don't get jumbled up. Now, explain that. Explain how that works. People can't explain that. There's no way they're going to explain that. How do the words in this little box go from one cell tower to another to another and goes on to over to Australia quicker than lightning? How does that do that? I mean, they're trying to explain that, and he's just scratching his head. He's scratching his head. Now, she says, Daddy, you can even talk to the missionaries around the world with that thing if you want. I said, I don't, I don't know if I believe that. You expect me to believe them words? You think I can call Brother Hatfield up there in Ohio? You know, he's up there in a mission country, up in that Yankee land. See, I don't, I don't think I can talk to him. And before he makes it, he said, I want to see how that thing works. He said, before we make that call, he said, I want to ask you, did you make that? Did you make that little thing? He said, no, I bought it. I bought a whole family plan, and each child has one. So you can contact me anytime you want, and in case of emergencies, you can call anywhere you want. In case you get lost, you need help, you can call. You can text me even. He said, what's that? He said, oh, never mind about that right now. He said, okay, did you meet the person that made that? Did you talk to the person that made that? Well, no, I didn't talk to the one that made that. You know, some company makes that. You know, one of them Verizons or something like that, they make those things. He says, so you didn't make it and you didn't talk to the people that made it, right? How does that thing work? Well, you, you just speak words into there. And the words goes in here, you know, and then it goes through all these towers. And then it goes into the person you're talking to and then they speak words in theirs. And then it comes back through those towers. And then they come back in here and then you can listen to that way. Uh-huh. You expect me to believe that? He said, I'm going to call Brother Hatfield. So he goes to his phone, dials the phone number. He said, I can understand this. I got wires in this thing. Gets on the phone. He talks to Brother Hatfield for a while. He shares a couple of prayer requests he has about the McCoys and everything. He hangs up the phone. And then she said, okay, now let's call him on a cell phone. He said, I don't think he's got one of them. No, no, it doesn't work. You call him up on a cell phone. You call him up on this. You don't believe me. So he called, she called the number. Now you talk to him. He said, I don't know. So he put his ear in that phone and he says, uh, Brother Hatfield? Yes? I don't, I don't know if I believe this. He says, now, you remember that when we were kids, we got in a fight with them McCoys? You remember that time? Remember that down there at that fork and that uh, road down there by that creek? You, and I, you remember that fight? What happened after that fight? And he told him a story. He said, man. Man, he's amazed now. He's convinced. You know, wait a minute. I, you know what? The Lord just reminded me of something. He'd been reading in Job. If you would, go to Job chapter 38. He'd been reading through Job, and he came across this verse, and he thought, man, that's a strange verse. Job 38, verse 35. The Lord gave him an oppression after he got that. He said, man, the Lord just reminded himself of something. And he read in Job 38, 35, and it says, Canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are. Do you know that's the verse that Samuel Morris understood and came up with the Morris Code? That verse? Those words are going through those wires or through the air by electricity. That's why it's traveling so fast. And he read that verse. He said, boy, boy, now I kind of kind of figure that thing out. He was pretty impressed with that there thing. He was holding it, playing with that thing. 
And he forgot. Oh, I forgot. He forgot. And he, he got all the presents out for the kids. The grandkids got his presents out for uh, his, his children. And he handed one to his grandson, Tom. You see, Tom's a sophomore at Tennessee University. And in that box, he opened that, Tom opened that box up, and there's a Bible inside there. And old Grandpa, he had a discerning look on it. He knew, he knew what happened. He there. I mean, he was disappointed he got this instead of a New Testament, and he could tell Tom was disappointed with his Bible. So he kind of put his arms around Tom, his grandson. He said, Tom, I can tell you're a little bit disappointed about that. He said, well, Grandpa, you know, I'm a sophomore in school, and I've been learning some things, and Grandpa, I've kind of been doubting some things. I've been wondering about some things. He says, Grandpa, he said, do you really believe you can talk to God and He hears you? Do you really believe that? He says, have you ever seen God? He said, Grandpa, do you know if the Bible is really true? How do you know we haven't evolved by accident? And the kind old gentle grandpa looked at Tom, put his arm on his shoulder, and said, Son, the questions you just asked are the same questions I ask about your little cell phone. You never saw the originator. You didn't make it. You can't explain how it works. You accept by faith that that works. And you know the good thing about my belief, son, is I can call and go to the North Star, past the North Star, right in the throne of heaven, and it says, what happens if my battery goes dead? My battery don't go dead. And if the satellites don't fall down, if the satellites fall down, and he put his arm around his son and he said, son, he said, you're going to learn from personal investigation and personal experiences will be your greatest testimony. Faith is believing what God says, and investigating and practicing what God says is what gives you hope. And with your personal faith and hope in what God says, you're going to fall in love with your Savior and His words. And 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, and the greatest of these is charity. And he says, Son, let me tell you something. Most people deceive themselves in order to justify themselves to live for themselves. He quoted in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, where it says, If a man seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. He, he, he turned in his Bible to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and he showed him this passage. He said, the reason why those, most of those kids in those schools believe that they evolved from an animal, and the reason why they're trying to ask you to prove, prove to me there's a God. Prove to me. I want to see them. I don't want all this faith stuff. But yet they live their life on faith by expecting to push certain numbers that it's going to go right to a certain source without any logical reasoning in mind. First, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, it says this, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Why? That they might that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. He said, Son, here's some things you're experiencing in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Here, every one of those kids that got a cell phone know that that didn't evolve from a battery. They know some intelligent person put that together. And when you look at the creation and all the evidence around you, you're going to find out that someone is intelligent who put that together. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20, he read him this verse. He said, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith, 
grace be with thee. And then he took Thomas one more place. He took him to John chapter 20. He told him a story about the doubting Thomas. And he said, This here Thomas did not believe, and he was quite fortunate where the Lord showed up and showed him. John chapter 20, verse 24, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my fingers into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold thy, my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And the old grandpa looked at that boy and he said, This Bible that I'm giving you, you can carry it anywhere you want, just like I can carry that cell phone. And that Bible you got will help you in emergencies, just like that cell phone is supposed to help me. And he said, You know what? You can converse anytime and anywhere with the writer of that Bible, God, even during power outages, for no charge. It's a matter of what you want to believe in. Okay, let's pray. Lord, I do pray you'd help us to see there are many things in life we cannot explain. Many phenomena. Airplanes. It's an amazing thing how an airplane gets off the ground with tons and tons of material and people, but get off the ground. It's an amazing, these cell phones, how fast, how quickly these have spread throughout the world. Nothing wrong with that. Lord, they are very convenient, very helpful can be used for the right things. But Lord, help us not to forget that we don't need a phone to call Thee. And we, don't, we can get right in the throne of God just by coming to You without any modern technology. And we got us a perfect Bible that we may not be able to explain everything in it, but there's a lot of things we don't explain in life. And we accept them by faith. Our heads about and eyes are closed. The instruments were playing. The altar's open if you need it. I've had people tell me, I don't believe in God. I've never seen them. They've never seen their brain either. They've never seen Abraham Lincoln either. They've never seen any of the founding fathers either. So all they read histories about them. There's a history about Jesus Christ. People have more faith in their automobiles than they do in the Bible of God. Americans have more faith in what a newspaper says than they do in the Bible than what God says. Americans are infatuated with new things. Newspaper, the news. And they forget the one that's in control of it is running the show.